Day three of the outdoor kitchen island starts off with the drawers. Now basic drawer construction here, nothing fancy. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, I made a video on how I prefer to make drawers. And even after all this time, the method remains the same. Three to four pocket holes in the front and back of the drawer to connect the full length side pieces. And I'm also using some 23 gauge pin nails to hold the part alignment before driving the screws. I like this method for non fine furniture applications where the only concern is long term durability. I've never seen a pocket hole joint fail outside of testing scenarios where it was tested to failure in an application where pocket holes should never be used in the first place. Also, because the pocket hole screws are installed on the front of the front and the back of the back, the pocket holes will never be seen. The decorative drawer front will obviously cover the front of the actual drawer and of course no one sees the back of a drawer. The drawer sides are 3 quarter inch plywood and I'm cutting some half inch plywood for the bottom. So check this out. I'm pushing a full sheet of plywood over the table saw with a large outfeed support. Nothing out of the ordinary, right? All is well, right? Wrong. I failed to consider the left side outfeed support and at first glance, I thought more than 50% of the offcut would be supported, but as you can see, nope. Not only did I nearly drop the offcut, but in the attempt to save it, I nearly pushed the panel back into the blade. So no matter how much experience you have or think you have, like me, it doesn't prevent you from having a lapse in judgment sometimes. Of course, the smaller pieces are easily managed on the table saw. This is why so many people prefer to make the first cut on the floor with a track saw or a circular saw. This is a drawer spacer, and I, and I know that because it says it right there. But it's just a scrap block the same length as the front and back panel. And because the poor quality of this plywood, I had to install the drawer sides with an inward bow and then use this piece to spread them out to correct the distance while attaching the bottom panel. Glue, a few pin nails to lock the position, and screws to attach the bottom panel directly to the sides. Glue is, is really all that's necessary, so screws are basically only used as clamps. The drawers need something to mount to, and to locate these mounts, the front drawer opening dimensions are transferred to the back panel on both sides of the island. The actual strips the drawer slides will mount to are two inches wide, and they're strips of three quarter inch plywood. Two for each drawer, so eight total. Then a bunch of spacer blocks from half inch plywood. Now this is pretty convenient because two three quarter inch pieces plus one half inch piece is close enough to the two inch width of the face frame styles. And I say close enough because plywood is a tiny bit thinner than its nominal thickness. The structure between the drawers will be a pair of three quarter inch strips with half inch blocks glued and pinned in place, making sure the strips are square and the ends line up. Smaller half inch plywood pieces are needed for the side assemblies. Now these pieces will be installed perpendicular though, as they're only needed to space the longer strip away from the sides. Glue and pin nails to hold while the glue dries. That makes two two side mounts and four one side mounts. The side mounts are installed with plenty of glue and a bunch of pin nails referencing off of the pencil lines in the back and the lower corner of the drawer opening. Pin nails again for immobilizing while the glue sets up. A lot of surface area on the back of the center style is missing due to it having four pocket holes cut into it. So I glued on a scrap plywood block on the back of the face frame and on the back of the opening. This will provide a, a shelf of sorts to help support the center drawer slide mount as it is glued in place. And of course, gluing and securing the center drawer slide mount is next. It's time to install the drawer slides on the drawer, and to start I use quarter inch thick spacers to elevate the drawer off of the work surface. Now the drawer slides can be attached directly to the side of the drawer while the slides are resting on the work surface. To mount the drawer slide to the cabinet, I start by clamping a block to the bottom of the drawer slide mount. Then the slide can be inserted resting on the block and on the front face frame. Now once in position, a few screws will secure it, and these economy full extension drawer slides are the best drawer slide of value in my opinion. Not quite as smooth and, and super nice like the soft close Blum slides, but also nowhere near as expensive, while still operating much better than cheap undermount slides. The center slides are attached the exact same way. A spring clamp is sometimes pretty handy to hold the slide in place while you secure it, but be careful because those little spring clamps can shift your alignment a little bit. To mount the drawer, collapse the cabinet side of the slide and move the bearing tray to the front. Then line up the drawer piece into the guides on the slides and push the drawer all the way back. 
Now, it'll be pretty tight the first time as you're pushing the pieces together without the assistance of the ball bearings at first. So just then operate the drawer a couple times to position the bearing tray properly and movement should be nice and smooth. This combination of drawer construction and drawer slides is just so darn easy and reliable. Just make the drawers one inch less in width and one half of an inch less in height than the drawer opening. Now here I used 24 inch slides on a 27 inch drawer and I'm left with 23 and a half inches of interior drawer space that's not obstructed vertically. Rinse and repeat for the installation of the rest of the drawers and then take a moment to make sure everything is working as it should. Some people like to go a little bit fast with this step, some people like to go a little bit slow, just don't break anything. These drawers are much bigger than I had imagined but I did size them to easily hold a few rolls of wide heavy duty aluminum foil. Back to some solid wood to start the door components. Now first I'm ripping a bunch of two inch wide strips at the table saw then cross cutting at the miter saw starting by batching out the longest dimension first. It's a rinse and repeat two station shuffle until all the door parts are accounted for. Eight pieces at 20 and one quarter of an inch, four pieces at 19 and one quarter of an inch, 16 pieces at 13 and three quarters of an inch, four pieces at 12 inches and eight pieces at eight inches. For the drawer front and door joinery, I'm using a tongue and groove bit in the router table. I'll have a link to this exact bit down in the description below if you're interested. Now normally you have to try and get these joints perfectly centered or you try to get these joints perfectly centered on the thickness. But in this case, I wanted the top of the groove to be the same height as the thickness of half inch plywood. That way I can cut a rabbit on the plywood and have the interior face of the plywood flush with the back of the door or drawer front. A test groove is cut and here you can see how much it ended up being off center. Now this is again by design. The thicker part will be on the outside. I like what I see on the test piece so every one of the door parts gets a groove cut on the long side. For the tongue cuts I'm using what's called a coping sled. The clear acrylic runs against the router fence and the material is clamped in place perpendicular so the cuts can be made on the end. Now if you're making doors at a router a sled like this is almost necessary. Unfortunately, the sled is in the way of the elevation adjustment on this particular router table. So I had to push the piece way further than it should be in order to raise the elevation and get the bottom of the top cutter lined up with the top of the groove. I didn't go all the way through on the first cut with a scrap piece because I did not want to cut into the backer board just yet. The backer board acts as a zero clearance and I didn't want to cut it until I knew the setup was dialed in. The first test fit was perfect, which is very rare for me, but I'll take it. Now the rest of the rails can be cut and each piece gets an end cut, making sure to have the outside face facing up with all of the cuts. Because this is an off center thing, you really gotta make sure, or I do anyway, I'm the one making this, I really have to make sure that there's a witness mark or something on the top of all the boards before beginning, so I'll be less likely to mix up the top and the bottom. The final step of the day was to take inventory of all the parts and verify that I did not screw anything up, which happens way more often than I'd like to admit. I like to do this by making a dry assembly of all of the parts, and once confirmed, work for day number three was over. As I said in the last video, this is not a priority build, so I'm just spending a day here there working on it while I've got a bunch of other stuff, both business and non-business related, going on in the background. Check out my friends at bitsbits.com. Uh, use the code JBates to save 10% off on your next order. I'll have a link down in the description to the exact router bit that I'm using for these doors and drawers. Uh, that's it for this one. I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.